worked in Fuangarola, Tony Holland felt vulnerable and depressed as his creation floundered. I used to walk around the balcony and the room, sort of trying to think of ways where something could be re-edited, but it got more and more hard to make it convincing. You know, that wasn't my little England. There were moments when I just couldn't handle it, when I thought, you know, you can't give of your best here. Tony resigned and returned to Britain, a broken man. He wrote to me a very articulate letter about why he just didn't feel that he could carry on. He was so allied with what it had been, and we were trying to mutate it into, into something else. Um, and you either have to commit 150% or you have to get out. And I think he, I think he just didn't have the, he just didn't have the stamina. Corinne now had to try and make other changes while still producing three episodes a week. It's a wheel that just keeps turning um, and we didn't have the ability to be able to say let's stop production for a period of time altogether and let's redress, you know, and regroup. Um, so it, it was really about, about trying to make changes while the whole thing was, was still running. She made vast improvements with the rating. The rating improved practically overnight and I think she flung a lot of the scripts back. It felt like we'd started to turn round, really, from the minute Corin came, that that great ship who was going in the wrong direction might actually now turn in the right one. After a disastrous start, the mood became more buoyant. There was a new attitude, new storylines, new characters. The ratings began to recover. The BBC was in a fighting mood and launched an offensive to support their multi-million pound investment. The BBC keep telling us now that we're going to get this for a year no matter what happens. Surely that's treating the viewer with contempt? No, I think it would treat the viewer with contempt and the license payer with contempt if we, on the basis of uh, a certain amount of reaction in the first few weeks, pulled the series uh, and, and virtually threw away the money that we'd invested in Spain. But how much longer are you prepared to go on working on it if you don't get the kind of ratings that you think it should be getting? Well, I'm actually confident that, that in, in six months' time or a year's time, the ratings that, that you do expect from this kind of show will be there. I'll bet you a quid. <laughs> the BBC was about to lose that quid. The power was shifting at the corporation. John Burt was to become the new director general. The emphasis would now be on the high ground with original and distinctive programming to win the license fee. And there were rumours that Burt didn't think El Dorado was original or distinctive enough. As Bert took the reins, the controller of BBC One, Jonathan Powell, the man who had commissioned El Dorado, the man who continued to stand by it during its trials and tribulations, decided to leave the BBC. He insisted it had nothing to do with El Dorado. When Jonathan Powell left, I thought that was the death knell. That was our last bastion of defence, our last supporter, I think. And I thought, yeah, that's it. We are going down, we're going to go down fast. News soon reached Spain that a new BBC One controller was taking over to pursue Bert's vision. Well, today the BBC announced who's being picked as the new controller of BBC One. He is Alan Yentob, who is currently doing the same job for BBC Two. Now, one of his first decisions will be whether to back or to scrap El Dorado. You can say about El Dorado that, it, oddly enough, if you wanted to do a soap, you know, you'd be mad to set it in Spain. That's what we could almost paradoxically call it innovative as an idea, and it failed. But a huge investment had been made. Viewing figures were rising, and many thought El Dorado would triumph, given time. 
was a very tough decision because it involved the future of a lot of people. Um, the program had been conceived uh, with an incredibly good pedigree. We still thought they, st they still won't pull it. They can't pull it. It's too much is invested here. Too many people's lives will be destroyed. It's kind of more than just another program. It's going to have a critical impact on, on the way that the public view the channel. Uh, so it's, it's a big, it's not just an investment in terms of money and time, it's also an investment in the brand. And if it isn't working, therefore, and it's going to have a bad impact on that too, then you, you know, you have a, you have to cut your losses and, and go. Two weeks later, new producer Corin flew to Spain to deliver Yentob's verdict to the cast and crew. Coming back was truly awful. It was one of the one of the um, least pleasant journeys I've ever had. A lot of us were convinced we were going to be taken off. Old mum here again, optimist <laughs> beyond words. I thought, no, they're going to have the wit to see that if they hang on to it, and we all get you know a, a pep talk, um, we'll be taken off. I knew immediately from the look on Corinne's face, it looked as if Corinne had been crying. Uh, because she cared deeply and she'd worked so hard. And it must have been very hard to stand up in front of everybody and say, well, that's it, it's over. I tried to be as, you know, as positive as I could about it um, and pass on to them, you know, the congratulations and the, you know, the, the, the praise that had been heaped on it and, and the, the thanks for all their efforts. But, but the bottom line is they were, they were all being sacked, really. A rush to transmission, misguided casting, a creator who lost his faith, a change of guard at the top. In the end, El Dorado was unable to withstand a series of fatal blows, and over ten million pounds later, it earned the reputation as the biggest failure in the corporation's history. The failure of El Dorado made the BBC very cautious about um, doing another soap opera, and in fact they haven't attempted to do since, um, because it was such an unmitigated disaster. So I think what they tended to do instead was to look at other programs and almost turn them into soaps. I mean, dramas like Casualty and subsequently Holby City, which would normally have expected perhaps a ten week, a season of ten, ten weeks, have virtually been turned into all the year round dramas. So they have in fact become the second soap operas. After just one year, the last episode of El Dorado went out with a bang on July the 9th, 1993. After all that thinking and discovering the idea in the first place, it was very depressing. I mean, I sit here still thinking about it. You know, what it might have been. Tony Holland has not worked for British television since. He now creates television shows for European TV. Julia Smith died in 1997. The set in Spain is still standing. It's now a hotel. It has taken 10 years for the BBC to regain its nerve. Finally, last summer, for the first time, BBC One overtook ITV in the ratings and held its lead. <laughs>